Welcome to the McNeese International Law Podcast Series. This podcast will address EU Privacy Directive by Louis Deschois, Attorney at Law. Mr. Deschois is Chair of the International Law Group and practices in the Corporate and Tax and Intellectual Property Groups at McNeese. Hello and welcome to our International Law Podcast. Today I'm going to talk about a topic that has been in the news over the last several months, the EU Privacy Directive and the death of the safe harbor. The EU Privacy Directive restricts companies operating in the EU from sending personal data of EU residents to countries outside of Europe unless that country is recognized by the European Commission as having an adequate degree of privacy protection. So far, the Commission has only recognized 10 countries as providing that protection. The United States is not one of them. In an effort to comply with the Privacy Directive, the United States negotiated with the EU what is known as the Safe Harbor Framework. Under the Safe Harbor, U.S. organizations were permitted to transfer personal data of EU residents to the United States for processing and storage but only if they agreed to abide by the principles embodied in the directive and then certify their compliance with the U.S. Department of Commerce. These principles include the requirement that the U.S. organization notify the individuals of the purpose for collecting and using their personal information and how to contact the organization if they want to discuss that use, whether third parties will be given access to the information and the choices they have to limit use and disclosure. There are different ways to satisfy the EU requirements, but for the past 15 years, the safe harbor framework has been perhaps the most popular. Unfortunately, the safe harbor is now dead. As a result of the Snowden leaks concerning our government's data collection practices, the Court of Justice of the European Union issued a decision last October invalidating the safe harbor. Essentially, the court felt that unfettered access to Europeans' personal data by our government, even for national security purposes, was incompatible with the principles of the Privacy Directive. Since the safe harbor was overturned, the United States and the EU have been frantically trying to come up with a substitute. What the negotiators have so far agreed to in principle is a new framework called the Privacy Shield. The Privacy Shield is much more exacting than the Safe Harbor in terms of notice requirements, security measures, and enforcement mechanisms. However, to address the new requirements at this time may be premature. The noise out of the EU is that even this more exacting framework will not be enough. The full group of EU data protection authorities, known as the Article 29 Working Group, recently weighed in. On April 13, they issued an opinion that sent the privacy shield back to the drawing board. They want tighter security guarantees and an independent authority to oversee complaints. Its passage is not at all assured, and even if it is adopted, it will undoubtedly be subject to judicial challenge. Further complicating matters is the recent enactment of the General Data Protection Regulation, which will eventually replace the Privacy Directive itself. We'll discuss that in more detail in a later podcast. In the meantime, U.S. companies are in limbo, and it looks like it will go on for a while. So what do you do now? How do you bring over personal information from your EU subsidiaries, employees, vendors, and customers? The answer to these questions are very fact-specific, and unfortunately don't lend themselves to a short podcast. If you'd like to discuss your specific situation and what you can do to protect yourself in bringing data across the Atlantic, please contact me or my colleague, Devin Schwasknik, the chair of our Privacy and Data Security Group, using the information on your screen.